Hi, I'm Dr. Nick Tulo, and I'm a medical advisor for STARS.org. I'm a practicing cardiac electrophysiologist in New Jersey, and I'm the creator of a number of educational websites. If you have atrial fibrillation, you may be at higher risk of having a stroke. The reason strokes occur in patients with atrial fibrillation is that small blood clots can form inside the heart, and if they break off and travel, they may wind up getting lodged in a blood vessel in your brain. Your actual risk of AF-related stroke depends on a number of factors, including your age, whether you have high blood pressure or diabetes, or if you have a history of vascular disease, heart failure, or have already had a stroke in the past. The more risk factors you have, the higher the chances of having a stroke, and your doctor may have put you on an anticoagulant because those medications discourage clots from forming and reduce your risk of stroke. A common medication that we use as an anticoagulant to prevent stroke and atrial fibrillation is called warfarin. Warfarin affects your blood's ability to clot by interfering with the production of special clotting proteins that are made by the liver. In order to make these clotting proteins, your liver needs something called vitamin K, which is found in many foods including dark green leafy vegetables like spinach and kale. Warfarin blocks vitamin K, so it interferes with your liver's ability to manufacture these clotting proteins. With less of these proteins circulating in your blood, your blood takes longer to clot. We measure your blood's ability to clot with a special test known as the prothrombin time, or PT, which is sometimes expressed as a special number called the INR. Normally, our INR should be about 1, but warfarin increases the INR, which means it takes longer for the blood to clot. The problem with warfarin is that it affects a number of these clotting proteins, and so its effects are unpredictable. Everyone winds up taking a slightly different dose, and the dose needs to be adjusted occasionally to maintain that INR between 2 and 3. Not only that, but if you eat a large amount of food rich in vitamin K, it may interfere with warfarin's effects and cause your blood to clot more quickly. That's why it's important to check the blood on a regular basis to make sure that you're taking the right dose of warfarin. The INR should be checked at least once a month so that your doctor can make adjustments in the number of milligrams you take every day. Since the COVID-19 pandemic began, there has been a worldwide effort to minimize contact between people in order to reduce the spread of the virus. In many countries, elective medical procedures have been postponed, and now we discourage patients from coming to the office. So, if you need to get your INR checked, it might be more difficult to do so. As a result, some doctors are suggesting that patients change over to one of the newer oral anticoagulants. There are about four of them currently on the market, and they all have distinct advantages over warfarin. First of all, their effects on the clotting proteins are very consistent, so most everyone can take the same dose. Studies show that these newer drugs are actually safer than warfarin, and they're at least as effective in preventing strokes. The fact that their effects are reliable and more predictable means that you don't have to get your INR checked. That saves you from having to leave your home and travel to the clinic just to get your blood drawn. These new medications may be more expensive, but they're definitely more convenient, less risky, and you don't have to worry about what kind of food you're eating. So go ahead and order that spinach salad, but make sure you get it to go.